And now, it's time for the bride and groom to cut the cake, announced the MC. As I reached to hold the knife with my husband, someone grabbed my head from behind and smashed my face into the cake. What? I couldn't breathe with my face and upper body submerged in cream and sponge cake. Confused and struggling to get up, I ended up falling on my butt. My face and my pure white wedding dress were completely covered in cake. The banquet hall erupted into murmurs. I looked at my husband, and he was just as stunned. Then someone called out to me. How unsightful! This is what happens when you don't listen to my advice. Standing there was a plump woman I had never seen before. Her face lit up with joy. Excuse me? He's mine. How dare you have a wedding so nonchalantly? Was she a guest? She was dressed formally, albeit huffing with anger. My groom, Nicholas, seemed to ponder for a moment before letting out a dry laugh and saying, A face full of cake. It's just a joke. Laugh it off, will you? At that moment, I completely lost it. A woman ruining my once-in-a-lifetime wedding by smashing my face into a cake. And my husband trying to pass it off as a joke. I won't forgive them. I'll show them. The wedding venue soon turned into a scene from hell. My name is Diana. 27 years old. Let me tell you about the major event that befell me, starting from my upbringing. I was born the only child to a company president father and a former model mother. I think it's fair to say I was born into a privileged family. My father was kind but strict, insisting that I needed to be able to survive on my own. So, he made sure I focused on my studies. Thanks to my hard work from a young age, I got into a prestigious university and landed a job at a major corporation. I grew up to look just like my mother in her youth. People often said I should be a model, but I had no interest in that kind of work. A few years into my professional life, I faced some snide remarks about my looks initially, but worked hard not to be outdone by them. Eventually, I started to be recognized for my capabilities at work. I was beginning to feel a real sense of accomplishment in my work, but I didn't have a single boyfriend from my early 20s until I was 26. My friends would chuckle and say, Diana, you seem like you're out of reach for most men. You seem normal once we talk to you, but maybe you're too intimidating for them. You don't show any vulnerabilities. However, I wasn't someone who prioritized romance, so not having a boyfriend didn't bother me much. I wasn't against the idea of marriage, but I was in no rush. That's how I felt. Meanwhile, my parents seemed anxious about me not having a boyfriend. Diana, you're beautiful, so you should get married to a good man before you get any older. My mother said with concern. I replied, Mom, I want to marry someone who appreciates me for who I am. Plus, I'm busy with work right now. During this conversation, my father chimed in. How about this, Diana? Want to meet a man I can introduce you to? An introduction by you, Dad? Yes. There's a young salesman who frequents our company who seems promising. If you say so, Dad, I'll meet him. And that's how I was introduced to Nicholas, who will later become my fiancé. Wow, you're so beautiful. 
It's so very nice to meet you. He said with a friendly smile as soon as we met. He had the bright and cheerful demeanor of a salesman. He always carried himself with confidence. A typical good looking and pleasant young man. He approached me boldly, not intimidated at all. He was well educated, worked at a reputable company, and seemed to have a good character. I found myself increasingly drawn to him and started dating him. We were praised as a handsome couple, and I was quite pleased with it. My parents warmly supported our relationship, especially my father, who was very happy about it. Nicholas took charge in planning our dates and would surprise me with gifts on ordinary days, thoroughly doting on me. I was aware of his slightly cheeky side, but it was overshadowed by his many good qualities. I gradually came to cherish him deeply. On my birthday, after a year and a half of dating, he reserved a high end restaurant. At the end of the meal, he nervously took out a small box. Diana, I can't imagine life without you. Will you marry me? Nicholas, thank you. Of course I'll marry you. As I gazed at the ring in awe, he tenderly hugged me. At that moment, I felt the happiest I've ever been in my life. Next, we went to meet his parents. They warmly welcomed me into their home. My, what a beautiful young lady. Are you really going to marry our Nicholas? Of course. We're all for the marriage. Nicholas, take good care of Diana. On our way back, Nicholas said to me, My parents are usually pretty strict with me, but they were really kind to you, Diana. Really? Your parents didn't seem that way to me. You think so? They were pretty tough on me when I was young. But I'm glad they like you, Diana. It makes sense, given how beautiful you are. Stop it. You're making me blush. A week after this conversation, it was time to introduce him to my parents. They were, of course, overjoyed. Diana, I was worried you were clueless about love. But you finally met your prince, my mother said, her eyes brimming with tears. My father added, Nicholas, if you marry Diana, I might even consider entrusting the company to you in the future. Really? Yes, I've heard you're competent at work, and I have high hopes for a promising young man like you. Surrounded by blessings and expectations for our future, our wedding was set. We decided to live together after the ceremony and began preparing for it. When we visited a newly built wedding venue, a wedding planner named Barbara greeted us. Diana and Nicholas, you're the perfect couple we've been looking for. We'll offer a substantial discount on the wedding cost if you agree to be our showcase couple. A showcase couple? Yes, we'd like to use your photos and videos for our company's PR. We'll provide the dress and jewelry as part of a sponsorship. How does that sound? It's an offer we can't refuse. Let's do it, Diana, he said, and I nodded in agreement. So, we decided to have our wedding as a showcase couple. Although we were engaged, he and I continued living separately, occasionally going on dates as before. He was often unreachable due to his busy work schedule, but I didn't mind too much. Time passed, and a week before the wedding, I noticed an anonymous letter in my mailbox. I opened it, feeling suspicious, and was shocked by its contents. A week later, there I was at the wedding venue, dressed in my wedding gown. Diana, you look stunning as expected. Barbara, the wedding planner, said cheerfully as she placed a sparkling piece of jewelry around my neck. Then the wedding ceremony began. Nicholas and I exchanged vows and rings in the chapel, watched by many. Friends, 
relatives, and colleagues from both our workplaces, including my father's company and Nicholas's company, gathered at the venue. There must have been over 200 people in attendance. Nicholas's boss led the toast, and the reception began. Our friends and colleagues came up to us one by one, saying, You look so beautiful. Congratulations. Then came the time for one of the highlights of the reception. The cake cutting. The moment for the cake cutting and the first bite, where we would feed each other cake, was upon us. And a crowd gathered around us to capture the moment. A luxurious three-tiered wedding cake crafted by an artisan for our special day, was brought in. Now, it's time for the bride and groom to cut the cake, the MC announced, as Nicholas and I held the knife. Ready to make the first cut, someone grabbed my head from behind and smashed my face into the cake. What? I couldn't breathe, my face and upper body buried in cream and sponge cake. Confused and struggling to get up, I ended up falling on my butt. My face and my pure white wedding dress were completely covered in cake, and the banquet hall was filled with murmurs. Looking at my husband, he was just as stunned. Then someone yelled at me. How unsightful! This is what happens when you don't listen to my advice. There stood a plump woman. I had never seen before, her face glowing with joy. Nicholas belongs to me. How dare you have a wedding so nonchalantly? Was she a guest? A face full of cake? It's just a joke. <laughs> Laugh it off, will ya? At that moment, I completely lost it. A woman ruining my once-in-a-lifetime wedding by smashing my face into a cake, and my husband trying to pass it off as a joke. I won't forgive them. I'll show them. Just as I was about to speak up, my mother's voice filled the wedding hall. Stop this nonsense. She rushed over, helped me up, and glared at the woman. What is this all about, Nicholas? Explain yourself right now. The woman talking over my mother shouted, Shut up, old lady. It's all this woman's fault. I did nothing wrong. A colleague of Nicholas's quickly restrained the woman, who seemed to be trying to attack me. Calm down, Sonia. She glared at me fiercely. After wiping my face with a handkerchief my mother handed me, I finally spoke. Nicholas, who is this woman? What's your relationship with her? That's... Sonia is a junior colleague at my company, he replied, his eyes clearly avoiding mine. I whispered to my mother to bring my bag from the dressing room. Oh, a junior colleague, huh? Why would just a colleague do something like this? Well, that's because... He began, but Sonia interrupted him, shouting, Nicholas and I are in love. You have no right to be here. Well, you heard her. No, that's not true. She's... she's my stalker. She's been claiming we're in a relationship and following me around. It's been a real nuisance. He shouted, pointing at Sonia. What? What are you saying? We truly love each other. Enough. Shut up. Security, please escort her out. At that moment, my mother returned. I took out a photograph from the bag she handed me and held it up. Then, what's this? It was a photo of Nicholas, sleeping in a hotel bed, clearly taken by a woman. What is this? Nicholas, along with all the guests, turned pale at the sight. I explained to everyone. This was sent to me anonymously a week ago along with a letter. Shall I read the letter? Don't marry Nicholas. He belongs to me. Back off. Sonia, you sent this, right? Yes, that's right. You ignored my warnings. He then panicked. Diana, you knew? 
The war. I couldn't cancel the wedding just a week before. The guests were already invited. Besides, this wedding has special circumstances, remember? Special circumstances? What are you talking about? Sonia asked, confused. The wedding planner, Barbara, intervened. This wedding was part of a showcase project. We were going to use the footage for the venue's PR, with everything from attire to the planning sponsored by various companies. What? A showcase? Sponsored? She still didn't understand and Barbara finally snapped. Do you have any idea how many companies and staff were involved for this day? You've ruined it all, so be prepared for the consequences. Do you know how much this is going to cost in damages? Damages? Then, a man removed the jewelry from my neck, saying, This jewelry was loaned to us by our company. It seems to have been scratched during the commotion earlier. It's worth $100,000. And now it's damaged. What? Hundred thousand dollars? Of course. You'll be compensating for this, right? Sonia turned pale and dashed towards the exit, but was quickly restrained by security. I watched this, then turned to Nicholas. Now it's your turn. You're ready to face the consequences, right? Diana, I did have an affair, but it was just a moment of weakness. He stood there, his face white as a sheet. Why would you cheat on me with someone like that? Well, Diana, you're beautiful and perfect. It's like eating gourmet meals every day and suddenly wanting a hamburger. It was something like that. What? Before I could raise my voice further, my father stepped forward in front of Nicholas. You scoundrel! How dare you do this to my daughter? My father, with bloodshot eyes, grabbed Nicholas by the collar and glared at him. S sir you have no right to call me sir. I'm severing all business ties with your company. I never want to see your face again. A chorus of gasps came from Nicholas's colleagues. It seemed that my father's company has significant dealings with Nicholas's, so their reaction was expected. Nicholas, thrown to the ground by my father, was then punched squarely on the head by his own father. Dad, what are you doing? Shut up. Apologize to Diana and everyone else now. Trembling at his father's voice, Nicholas knelt down, pleading for forgiveness. Diana, please, forgive me. I'll break it off with that woman and promise to be a good husband. That's when I threw the cream-covered handkerchief at him. How dare you? I will never forgive you. Our engagement is obviously over. Prepare for hell. With my mother by my side, I left the venue, and my father announced the cancellation of the wedding. Later, Nicholas and I broke off our engagement, and I received $30,000 in damages for his infidelity. Nicholas was, of course, responsible for paying the ruined wedding expenses. The venue pressed charges against Sonia and sought compensation for the damages, including the costs of the staff specially arranged for the dress and jewelry. Nicholas and Sonia were both demoted at their company and eventually resigned, unable to endure the scornful looks. Sonia ended up in significant debt, and Nicholas was disowned by his parents. I don't know what became of them, but they're likely living a miserable life. As for me, I managed to recover, thanks to the encouragement of my parents and kind colleagues and friends. A year after that hellish wedding, a male colleague who had always liked me confessed his feelings. And now, we are dating. I'm determined to learn from this experience and live a life full of effort until I find true happiness someday.